Hey everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor. Well, before getting into the construction aspect of logarithmic spiral, I would like to shed some light on the impact of this curve around us. Do you know that the arms of spiral galaxies? Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, has several spiral arms, each of which is roughly a logarithmic spiral with pitch of about 12 degrees. Now take a look at this figure. This is this is a cyclone, or to be very precise, this is an extratropical cyclone over Iceland, and it approximately resembles a logarithmic spiral pattern. This is broccoli, not the usual one, but this is a special broccoli, and this is what you call a Romanesco broccoli. This grows in a logarithmic spiral pattern. Now. This very curve has evolved in so many forms that it is in the fabric of our mother nature. Remember, the logarithmic spiral can be distinguished from the Archimedean spiral by the fact that the distances between turnings of logarithmic spiral increase in geometric progression or the radius vector increase following a geometric pattern or geometric progression. Whereas in the case of Archimedean spiral, these distances were following or their radius vectors were following an arithmetic progression. To be very mathematical, let me go ahead and say this, in case of a logarithmic spiral, the radius vector increase following a geometric pattern or a geometric progression and the vectorial angle, well, they increase following an arithmetic progression. In the case of Archimedean spiral, remember, both radius vector as well as vectorial angle, they increase following an arithmetic progression. So this is basically how you can differentiate these two curves. Now, let's take a look at this example and let's try to construct a logarithmic spiral. And here we go. Construct a logarithmic spiral of one convolution given the length of its shortest radius as 21 mm and the ratio of lengths of the radius vectors enclosing an angle of 30 degrees as 8 by 7. Okay, so the minimum radius vector or the shortest radius has been given as 21 mm. Okay, then one by one we know very well that the value of radius vectors keeps on increasing and that increase follows a geometric progression. So if R0 is 21, then R1 is going to be this 8 by 7 8 by 7 multiplied by 21. You just do this calculation. This is very basic. 7, 3, 8, 3 is 24. Now this way you can get the value of all the radius vectors from minimum to maximum. Then R2. Let's say we want to calculate R2. It can be calculated by multiplying 8 by 7 with the previous radius vector. What is the previous radius vector? It is 24. So this will be some sort of decimal value millimeters. And similarly, you can go on and on and get the radius vectors in the form of R3, R4 and so on. But this is going to be a very hectic task. You have to involve a lot of calculator in this and the values that you are going to get will be in decimals. So it will be very difficult for you to translate all these decimal values and incorporate them into the drawing. So what do we do? We construct a scale and from that scale, what will we do is we will transfer all the distances with the help of a compass or a rounder from the scale of the spiral to the curve of the spiral. You will understand that very soon. Okay, so let's kick off. Here we go. What is this? This is OP naught. O is the pole, right? Let me just write over here. O represents the pole and point P is the moving point, you can say. Right now, this point is, uh, well, it's at rest, you can see. And this is 21 millimeters. So the initial radii of this point, the point is initially 21 mm away, you can see from this pole. Okay, what's next? Make a right, randomly draw or produce a line in this right hand side direction of any random length. And then with respect to this line at an angle of 30 degrees, again make a line of any random length. Now what? Watch this. What we'll do is, See the denominator. Denominator is eight is seven. So what we'll do is we'll divide this OP naught into seven equal parts. Now if you want to have seven divisions over here, you need to put up seven arcs. Okay, so something like this: five, six, and seven. Now this line has been randomly drawn at any angle. If you want to learn how to divide a line into n number of equal parts, you can go ahead and watch my videos on plane or diagonal scales. So they are going to really help you. Now. What I've basically done is uh, I've made a line and then 5 mm marks these, okay, as many as 7 arcs. 
seventh arc has to be joined with the end of this line or with the knot you can say and then hold your drafter along this line tighten the screw bring it over to the sixth point draw a line fifth point draw a line keep on doing so until all the points have been exhausted okay now the next thing to do here you can say that this was 21 millimeters long so we have seven divisions so all the divisions are three millimeters each well this could have been done with the help of a simple scale well three millimeters can be marked with the help of a scale let's say had this been 22 millimeters what would have been your response 22 divided by 7 well we don't get an integer we get a decimal value in that case it would have been very difficult for us to do the marking with the help of a scale therefore when you whenever you have something which is divisible you can use a scale but if there is something which is not divisible or you can say when you have to deal with a number which gives output in the form of a decimal value there you should definitely use this line division technique and it is really really very helpful now we are going to have eight divisions over here and those eight divisions will have radius this much how much this is three like this so keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here and with that much amount as the radii with this as the center cut an arc now with this as the center cut an arc this as the center cut an arc all these arcs this is equal to this this is equal to this this is equal to this all of them are equal radii arcs so how many do we have one two three four five six seven eight done join p naught with this one okay so this is one two three four five six seven and eight this automatically works out as how much how much this is 24 right this is the initial vector and this was 21 and this is the just following vector and this works out as 24 automatically if you measure this with the help of a scale it is automatically going to work out as 24 join this 8 with p naught okay so that's p1 for you if p0 vector is 21 then p1 vector is going to be 24 so let me shift this into in this horizontal line so what i'll do is I'll keep one leg of my compass at O, other leg at P1 and then I'll go for a clockwise rotation. This point over here, this is going to be what you call point 1 and this represents how much? Well, this represents a distance of 24. Anyway, we'll be marking all the distances of radius vector along this inclined line. Now guys, listen to this very carefully. You need to have your mini drafters or your roller scales. Keep your scale aligned along this P1, P0 line keep your scales mini drafters or roller scales aligned along p1 p0 and then bring it over to this point draw a line it should be absolutely parallel this point is going to give you point p2 okay again with os center and radius as op2 go for a clockwise rotation it is going to intersect somewhere here let's say this is 2 again you need to draw a line parallel to this line use a mini drafter for that purpose something like this and that's p3 in the same manner you can mark the remaining points same process same process and this is going to go until we reach until we reach p12 and there you go now the scale has been constructed what we need to do is very simple we need to shift all these points with respect to this o we need to shift all these points from p1 to p12 onto the spiral curve and that is a very easy process let me show you how that can be accomplished and here we go Okay, so the first thing is OP naught initial radius vector. How much or how far? This is 21 millimeters far. Then <clears throat> the largest radius vector that we'll have is this one. So keep one leg of your compass at O, other leg at P12, and with that much amount from here to this point, with that much amount as the radii, draw a circle. Now it was given to us that two consecutive radius vector subtend an angle of 30 degrees in between them. That means if you if you have to traverse a complete circle 30 30 30 okay 90 degrees then 30 30 30 in 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 this manner you need to have as many as 12 divisions so it would be something like this something like this okay now let's start from here let's mark this as zero this at somewhere along this line we'll have our radius vector one okay and there we'll uh, we'll have a point p1 so let's say this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and this has got to be overlapped with 12. Now what you need to do is keep one leg of your compass at O, other leg at P1 with 
O as the radius, rather O as the center, cut an arc along this O1. This is going to give you P1. In the same manner, with OP2, one leg at O, other leg at P2. Somewhere along O2, with O as center, cut an arc, that's going to give you P2. Now with OP3 as the radius and O, O as the center, cut an arc and that's going to give you P3. In the same manner, you can have the remaining points. And finally, P12 is going to, well, it's going to be here only. Okay, now let me mark all the points. This is going to be P1, P2, P3 and so on and so forth. And finally, let me have the yellow dots. You don't have to do that. Okay, this is just to show you. That's it. So our logarithmic spiral is in the final stage. And when you join all these points in proper sequence, this is exactly what you get. A logarithmic spiral, aka an equiangular spiral. So guys, that was all from my side for today. I'll see you in the next lecture with a video on tangent and normal for both the curves. An Archimedean as well as a logarithmic spiral. So I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, take care, have a nice day and thanks for watching.